With growing concern about climate change and the melting of our polar ice caps, some scientists are now looking to radical solutions. One scientist from Arizona State University is proposing to install 10 million pumps in the Arctic in a bid to refreeze the region. Joining me to, dis to discuss how this plan would work is Professor Stephen Desch. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Let's get right into this. Can you explain how this would actually work? Sure. Uh, we're advocating uh, studying something called Arctic ice management, which is both uh, an idea about helping to uh, change the amount of sea ice in the Arctic and a possible technology for doing that. Uh, the technology we're proposing, I think, is shown on the graphic on screen. It involves uh, nothing more than having wind turbines installed on buoys uh, that would raise water from below the sea ice to the top of the sea ice during the Arctic winter using wind power, and then the water would be spilled out over the surface of the ice. And by moving the water from below the sea ice to the top, where it's colder, uh, this would accelerate the rate of freezing. And by our calculations, it should be possible for one such device to raise the thickness of the ice over one Arctic winter by one meter over an area of about a tenth of a square kilometer. And a large number of these devices could restore the amount of ice that is currently being lost year to year. Okay, so bringing the water from under the ice on top so it uh, essentially makes the ice thicker. Uh, why are scientists resorting to such radical measures to combat climate change? Right, the pace of climate change is uh, pretty severe, but it's more s severe in the Arctic than anywhere else. The temperature increases are greater there. The summer sea ice is uh, being lost the area of the sea ice is roughly half of what it used to be just 20 or 30 years ago. The volume of sea ice is, is dropping drastically. And by 2030, it's quite possible there's practically no summer sea ice. By the end of the summer, at around 2030, you, you wouldn't see very much ice in the Arctic. And this is a very bad situation because the Arctic is like the world's air conditioner. And we need it there, uh, the ice in the summer, to reflect back sunlight. And by having that ice melt and become open ocean, instead of reflecting back 90% of the sunlight, it absorbs 90% of the sunlight. And the temperature changes in the Arctic are leading to the loss of sea ice, and they're also leading to the um, thawing of the permafrost, which is releasing tremendous amounts of methane, which is another uh, greenhouse gas. And so we need to do something in the Arctic to prevent these feedbacks from happening and given the time scale of the problem, this, this is happening on uh, time scales of just 10, 15 years. Uh, nothing we do on the world stage to cut CO2 emissions is going to happen fast enough to prevent that loss of sea ice, which is so important. Right, so we need to do something now. But Stephen, I, I have to ask, the Arctic we know is such a sensitive environment. So is there any chance that actually installing the pumps could do more harm than good? Well, this is why we're advocating studying it and not going out tomorrow and doing it. Uh, we think there's a lot of open questions about the technology, and we think that there should be a wider discussion of this, both technically and uh, politically, to discuss the ethics of this and to involve the relevant stakeholders. But compared to other uh, projects, you might call this a geoengineering project, uh, it should have relatively fewer negative uh, consequences because what we're doing, what we're advocating doing, is simply amplifying a very natural process, the freezing of sea ice in the, in the winter, to restore the ice to the level that it was at just 20 years ago. You alluded that any, th any other measures that we could take are just going to take way too long to combat climate change. Uh, with, the, with what you're suggesting, does this mean that we are really past the point of no return on carbon emission and the only way to save the Arctic is to do what you're suggesting, possibly try to refreeze it? Yeah, we quite possibly are at a tipping point in the Arctic. And to be sure, we're not saying that this would solve all the problems of global warming, and it's going to be very necessary to reduce CO2 emissions worldwide, or else nothing you do in the Arctic is going to make a difference. But given the uh, sensitivity of the Arctic to climate and its importance in the climate system, we think that it's necessary to intervene right now in the Arctic to prevent those feedbacks from happening. Right. Okay, Stephen, thank you so much. This is so incredible, and, and we really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today.